What's going on everyone? In today's video, we are going to be talking about how to fix lower back pain from sitting. So this is certainly one of the more common themes in today's culture and society. As someone who works with people on the daily basis who deal with all sorts of different types of ailments and pains, back pain is probably one of the more prominent issues that I run into just from a fitness professional standpoint. And one of the main things that I get asked all the time is, how do I reduce back pain, obviously for one, but more importantly, how do I reduce it from sitting or should I avoid sitting altogether? What, what are the things that I should and should not be doing to aid me through this process of getting out of pain? Now, unfortunately, this can be a very specific issue depending on the type of back pain that you're dealing with and the potential causes behind it. But with that being said, that's not to say that there aren't some general or more foundational things that we can do to aid ourselves in not having to deal with back pain on a daily or a reoccurring basis. So I think one thing to be mindful of, first and foremost, is if you are a desk jockey and you find yourself sitting for extended periods of time is to just become aware of what your sitting position is like. If you're the type of person who tends to slouch over quite excessively into their desk, depending on where your back pain is, um, most people deal with lower back pain, but it's not to say that you can't get back pain through your shoulders or in through your neck even. How you sit is definitely going to play a role in where the pain is and how often it is going to come up. There is definitely deeper aspects and mechanisms that are gonna be causing back pain, but if you are sitting inappropriate, not inappropriately, <laughs> we won't say that. If you aren't sitting efficiently and you aren't moving well in conjunction with that, or your body doesn't move well or efficiently outside of a seated position, then that is when you are potentially going to run into issues. So let's first look at the seated position itself because that is definitely gonna be a good place to start. So if we look at the lower portion of the spine, this is gonna be probably one of the biggest causes as to why you're getting a tightness, an ache, or any type of feedback into the lower back. And it's typically due to this excessively rounded position through our lower spine. What this ends up doing is it creates a lot of slack in through the muscles in our lower back, and it causes a disconnect of tension for our spine and other stability muscles that play a role even into the pelvis. And as we start to sit down, repeat that position, and then stand up and go about our day-to-day -day life, we're losing tension in core areas that are going to not be promoting any type of stability or proper tension into those muscle groups. So one of the first things that you can do, just as a easy fix, is putting your pelvis into more of a neutral position. And neutral you can kind of view as your safe spot. It's where you are going to find a good sense of stability and where your body more often than not is in a safe place. So if we are in this excessively tilted position, in this kind of rounded position, all we're gonna to wanna to do is think about kind of lifting the tailbone up towards the ceiling. And what this is gonna offer is a very small baseline of tension into certain muscle groups and through the lower spine, and then potentially even into the upper spine as well. But what you're gonna to wanna to be mindful of when you do this is that it is being oriented from the pelvis itself and not just from you lifting your sternum up or shifting the rib cage forward. Ideally, this is going to be a pelvic dominant motion and you're gonna to wanna to try to keep yourself relatively uh, neutral in that position throughout the course of the day. Now, this isn't something that is just going to automatically happen. It is something you're definitely gonna to have to put some awareness into but if you can adjust the pelvic positioning alongside even introducing some basic type of breathing to create intra-abdominal pressure or even a little bit of rib cage pressure, then you can even start to get a little bit of a decompressive effect in this position. So now that we understand this pelvic positioning, 
let's start to move into some more practical ways that is going to help to support this new positioning. Because it's not just a matter of us just putting our pelvis into place and hopefully everything turns out. There is some mechanical work that we can do to complement this. So if I find myself in this overly kind of flexed position through my lower back or this rounded position, what we're gonna be looking for is potential muscles that might be holding too much tension on the front side of our body. Because if, my, if I'm kind of in that rounded position, then it's likely that these tissues on the front side of my body might be a little bit short. So one of the primary muscles that we could look at here is going to be our psoas muscle as well as our upper abdominal muscle. Now what I like to utilize for these two releases is a softball. There is a wide assortment of different types of specific tools out there that I think you can spend a arm and a leg on, but what I have found is using a softball is going to be just as beneficial as spending five or even 10 times as much as you would on something that is about five bucks. So what we're gonna do with the softball to release your psoas is really quite simple. You are gonna put the softball on your belly button and you're gonna take a half a roll to your right. And then all we're gonna do from here is just gently come onto our belly and just apply a gentle amount of pressure downward. This isn't going to be too excessive. I don't want you to forcefully just push yourself into this. What you're actually gonna to try to focus on more than anything is actually allowing the belly and the muscles in around the belly to relax as much as you can. So what you may have to do here is actually prioritize letting those muscles and your breathing slow down and not take as deep of a breath. Because if I'm taking full inhales and exhales, I'm not allowing my nervous system to register that this is supposed to be something that is restorative and relaxing. So place it on the tissue and then try to downregulate your breathing as much as you can. Simply just breathe through your nose and be very shallow with the amount of air that you're taking into your belly. This is probably only going to be maybe 35 to 40% of the regular amount of air intake that you would be regularly taking in, but it is going to allow for a deeper and a more restorative release in through the psoas muscle. When it comes to releasing the upper abdominals, it's much of the same case. We are going to apply this into the upper abdominals and what I want you to kind of envision here is you're almost going up on a little bit of an angle, almost like a 45 degree angle upward. And from there, same sort of idea, I'm gonna gently just allow myself to take pressure onto the ball and then I'm going to begin to soften my breath as much as I can. And what I have found from personal experience as well as what I see in clients is this really tends to be an area, not only from a muscular tension standpoint, but also from a emotional standpoint. I think a lot of people tend to hold stress, anxiety, and really an assortment of different type of emotional states in through this area. I think when we are in times of stress, we tend to wanna to kind of go into ourselves, And I think this tends to be a pretty common area. So what you may find here is that you are a little bit apprehensive to go into this release initially, and that's okay. It's gonna be a little bit different of a sensation than you might be used to if you have done release work in the past, but just do your best to, again, down-regulate the breathing, try to make it somewhat shallow, and just let that release happen as your body goes into that relaxing state. So up until this point, we have covered a way for you to create better alignment, just consciously kind of changing where the pelvis is on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as we have gone over two different releases just so that this position becomes a little bit more intuitive over time. The last piece of the puzzle is to reorient all this tension in our body through a tensioning exercise for the posterior chain or really the entire backside of our body. And what the purpose is here is to take elements of the conscious awareness that we take from the adjustment of the pelvis and the release work and build on that so that we don't have to do as much release work and we don't have to constantly make this adjustment with our hips. 
This is gonna be the way that we can actually change the mechanisms behind the madness, if you will. The mechanism that's actually creating the back pain over time. So for this exercise, what we are going to do is simply come up into a standing position and we are going to go through a hybrid of kind of a hinge pattern and almost a squat. We're kind of looking for that sweet spot somewhere in the middle. And what we are going to be working here is a gradual weight shift to our heels as the pelvis kind of slowly descends backwards. And we're trying to feel the inner thigh muscles as well as the muscles on the backside of our leg kind of initially grab a little bit almost as if you're getting a little bit of a stretch through those areas. And once you feel little hints of that stretch, what I want you to think about doing is utilizing that stretch to take yourself back to an upright position. So what we're starting to do here is teach our body that when I go through this pattern with my body, it's a safe position to go. You're giving your body the neurological awareness that my back is okay in this position. And then we're taking that tension and we're bringing ourselves back to a position that we commonly find ourselves in on a day-to-day -day basis, which is standing. And the better that we can get at taking kind of this support system that we're building on this dissension as we come up, the more stability and overall efficient tension we're gonna have in our body over time. And really what we are doing here over time is creating the framework or the programming for our lower back to work from on a day-to-day -day basis. And the more that I can get my release work in and the more that I can be conscious of how my body is kind of moving through space, the better off I'm ultimately going to be in the long term. So take your time going through these exercises and do your best to stay consistent with them as well as the consistency of it is really going to be what creates the compounding effect for your structure over time. And over time, what is going to happen is these, these types of exercises are going to create kind of the seatbelt effect for your lower back and the rest of your structure to work from. So give these exercises a shot and let me know how it went for you down in the comment section below. Let me know if it helped your lower back in any way, as I'm curious to see if these types of exercises apply to you guys. That's gonna be all for today's video. I hope you guys did find it useful and helpful in some way, and hopefully you learned something new throughout the process. My intention here is to not just give you a general set of programming to work from, but to also provide you with the education and the resources that you can continue to pull from to hopefully aid your body in living a long and healthy life. If you're interested in content like that, then like this video as well as subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell as that way you will never, maybe not never, but you'll be less likely to miss future videos. And something that would help me out greatly is if you shared this video, as that does just help to bring more like-minded people like yourself to the platform. Until next time, make sure you are prioritizing and then you are optimizing for you. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.